Welcome to my channel. My name is Ria, and today we are going to talk about the full moon happening in the sign of Aries. Full moons bring endings, completions, release. They are a culmination point of an energy. This full moon is at 24 degrees of Aries. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. It signifies taking action, initiations, beginnings, uh, getting things started. On the positive, on the not so positive, Aries can be impulsive, it can be aggressive, it can be violent. Right, so this is the basic energy that's coming in with this full moon. Now, that being said, let's talk about the aspects that are going on. So the first important aspect that I want to speak about is that this moon is making a 90 degree angle with Mars. Mars is the ruler of Aries and right now it is in the sign of Cancer where it's not very comfortable. Mars signifies a lot of things that Aries signifies, right? It's about taking action, it's about getting things done, it's about um, being impulsive, it's about being aggressive, it's about being violent, right? That's Mars as well. And this is a 90 degree angle, a challenging aspect in astrology. And what this tells me is that that energy of getting things done, starting things, initiations is even more magnified. And what we need to really keep in check is being impulsive, being aggressive, being violent. Um, anything where we have not thought of the consequences, that should not be done, right? It's that energy where we must ask ourselves, okay, if I do this, what will I get in return? If I take this action, what is going to be the consequence? So that is an important question we must ask ourselves. It's a great, great energy to begin things, to initiate things, to get things started. However, again with this, think about what this will get you. Okay, you start this, you initiate this, you begin this, but what are you getting out of it? What are the consequences? What are the result of this thing that we start right so that's the pertinent question on this moon the second thing i want to talk about is that the moon is also in a square to pluto 90 degree angles with angle sorry 90 degree angle with pluto pluto is intense pluto is about change it's about transformation it's about digging deep it's about unearthing things it's about secrets coming to the surface it's about a release an emotional release it's about catharsis it's a lot of things but pluto is intense and what it brings is intense transformation and this is a square with the moon and what this tells me is that this is a transformative moon. This is about really digging deep and figuring out what's happening under the surface, whether that's emotionally or whether that's in uh, the world around us. It's about um, figuring that out, right? Figuring out what's not being said, that sort of thing. Nonetheless, this moon will feel intense, right? Because a square to Pluto never feels easy. However, that's not a negative thing, right? What we can do to manifest this Pluto energy positively is really work with Pluto's energy. Pluto wants us to change. Pluto wants us to release old things. It wants us to um, transform fully. So we must work with that. We can't resist Pluto, right? Because Pluto will cause a change whether we like it or not so what we need to do is really uh, go within think about what needs to change if there's something that needs to be released if there's something that needs to be transformed we must take action right but think about the consequences right don't just jump into that action so since mars and pluto are both in this 90 degree angle with the moon we also have mars building up its opposition to pluto mars and pluto will oppose each other and mars is moving towards that opposition right it's moving closer to that degree where it will oppose pluto mars and pluto in an opposition and this is intense this is transformative action this is change that can feel intense this is change that can really really impact us very deeply so we are in this energy for a few days not just on the moon but a few days after this moon where we feel where, where we'll feel this intensity build up more and more and more where we are being asked to balance 
what needs to be transformed with action right and what that translates to is how we can take action to transform or how we can do things to change or how we can do things to release things within us these are the things that um, we can be working on right now it is a time of intense change it is a time of intensity it is a time of an energy where we must keep a check on the negative manifestation of mars and both pluto right mars negative manifestation is being impulsive being aggressive being violent and the negative manifestation of pluto can be destructive it can be this intensity which can destroy right so that's what we must keep a check on so those are the two big things happening with this moon and now if you recall i said this is a full moon in aries right and we had a new moon in Aries, new moon solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024 of this year, right? New moon solar eclipse, which means new um, beginnings that are karmic in nature. That happened April of this year. And if you recall, that new moon solar eclipse was at 19 degrees of Aries in a conjunction with Chiron, right? And we are at that six month point. Point where we are having the full moon in Aries so think of April of this year maybe we are completing something right maybe we are completing something that started for us in April of this year so just give that a thought also I would like to say that the moon is in a conjunction with Chiron even on the full moon right we do have Chiron sitting right next to the moon on this full moon. Chiron is at 21 degrees. This moon is at 24 degrees. So very, very close. And Chiron is an energy that is about healing, right? And that sounds very good. It's not bad. But Chiron's healing is bittersweet. And when I say that, it means we need to put in the work to heal, right? With Chiron, we really, really need to put in the work to heal because Nothing from the outside is going to come and heal us, right? Healing will have to be internal. Healing will have to be done with a lot of work from us. So just keep that in mind. And what this can feel like is, for example, if you want to um, get stronger, right? You're going to go to the gym and you're going to work out. You're going to do something that makes your body stronger. So it's the work that you have to put in to make your body stronger. Nobody can do it for you. So it's a similar thing, right? With Chiron, the healing is there, but we must do the work internally to be able to heal ourselves of something. So Chiron is there with this moon as well. The next thing I want to talk about is we've spoken about these intense, intense aspects. We've spoken spoken about Chiron being there which is an opportunity to heal however that may not feel the best now I want to speak about the fact that Jupiter is making an angle with this moon as well it's making a 60 degree angle with the moon Jupiter is in Gemini right now and it is aspecting this moon as well Jupiter is expansive it expands things it uh, magnifies things it's a teacher it's uh, about lessons it's about growth and with an aspect there can be a lesson here for us there can be something we need to learn um, here there can be something um, that's trying to teach us something at the same time although Jupiter is in a positive aspect and Jupiter is a benefic which means it brings blessings rewards and gifts with an aspect to the moon, it is magnifying that energy of Aries. Aries, like I said, is impulsive, it's aggressive, it's violent, it's about on the, on the negative, on the positive, it's about getting things done, it's about taking action. So Jupiter in the mix is asking us to learn something. It may result in something positive, it may. But the main thing here is that this energy is very, very uh, magnified. The energy of Aries, the energy of Mars. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Now I want to talk about a few more things that are going on in the chart. Oh, but before that, I also want to say that since last July, July 2023, we've had the North Node and the South Node, Rahu and Ketu in Aries and Libra respectively. Rahu, the North Node, is in Aries and Ketu, the South Node, is in Libra. And why this is important is because this is a full moon in Aries and Rahu is there in Aries as well. It's magnifying Aries, taking action, starting things, new things, initiations, beginnings on the positive, on the not so positive, 
aggression, violence, impulsive, being impulsive. So Rahu is there again intensifying Aries. So there's a lot of emphasis, there's a lot of intensity with Aries, right? And I keep on saying that because it's important. And if there's one thing we want to keep in check on this moon, it's being impulsive, it's being aggressive, it's not taking action too fast. It's about thinking of the consequences. That's the key with this moon. Now, moving on to the other aspects, the other, not the other aspects, the other things that are going on uh, before we kind of wind it up because these things will um, give you an idea of the um, longer term energies that we are dealing with. So if you've been following me, my channel, watching the videos, then you know that Pluto is back in Capricorn. Pluto re-entered the sign of Capricorn in September of this year, 2024. From January to September, it was in the sign of Aquarius and it entered a... Okay, a little bit uh, background. Pluto is very slow. It goes through the zodiac very, very slowly. From 2008 to 2023, 15 plus years, it spent in the sign of Capricorn. 2023, March, it entered Aquarius for a brief two months or so and then went back into Capricorn. Jan 2024, it re-entered Aquarius and then now it's back in Capricorn. And why is this important? It's important because since September to November, we are finishing up the loose ends of a 16-year cycle, Pluto in Capricorn cycle that started for all of us in 2008. We saw glimpses of this April 2023, March 2023, sorry, when Pluto entered Aquarius briefly, but then went back. So we had a little beginning, a, something new, but the past was not fully over. Then January, it entered Aquarius. So more new things started, the new change started, but we still have some of the baggage, some of the old, some of the past left to close out. So that's what we are doing September to November, closing out a 16-year cycle and then we will be fully in Pluto in Aquarius energy November of this year. So why is that important on this moon? It's important on this moon because this is a moon with Pluto in Capricorn. So a lot of the past can be coming up for review, a lot of the past can be coming up for closure. So just keep that in mind as well. And it's also important because... Um, I mentioned this in a previous video as well. We have Pluto changing signs after 15 to 16 years, right? Pluto will finally enter Aquarius November of this year. We have Neptune at the end degrees of Pisces. We have Uranus at the end degrees of Taurus. So with these three outer planets changing signs uh, so close to each other, we can expect a lot of themes in our lives shifting and it's not on this moon it's slower it's a matter of months even years i would say right more next year that sort of thing but just keep that in mind because we are at the end degrees which means we are at the end of the cycle we are at the end of many cycles and we are at the beginning of many cycles as well so we are in that phase where Past is closing out and the new is beginning. Both are happening simultaneously. But the past is still here with us. And till November, we'll get rid of a major chunk of it. And then we'll be left with the Plut um, Uranus in Taurus and Neptune in Pisces cycle for us to close out fully so that we can step into those new energies uh, next year right more next year we will also have saturn change signs next year so saturn is another slow moving planet so we are building up to a lot of changes right now it is transiting the sign of pisces it has been transiting the sign of pisces since march 2023 pisces is the last sign of the zodiac it's about endings as well so with saturn there since for the past year and a half almost now a lot of emphasis on closing our 28 to 30 year cycles Saturn in Pisces, getting rid of uh, the past in our minds, the past in our subconscious, getting rid of those things. So to sum it up, the longer term energy is about new things starting and the old things falling away, old things diminishing, old things declining. So just keep that in mind and this energy is going to continue. 
it's going to continue for many more moons it's going to continue for many more months but we but what's important is that the new is also coming up simultaneously as the old is closing out so i think that sums this uh, up we'll also have venus changing signs shortly after this moon venus has been in scorpio where it does not like to be and now it will enter the sign of sagittarius so we will see a shift in how we approach our relationships and how we approach our um finances that sort of thing because venus in scorpio is intense it's deep it's not a very nice place for venus let's just put it that way venus in sag is about expansion it's about approaching our relationships and finances in a more uh, adventurous way in a more light-hearted manner than say scorpio so we are going to have that change as well in a nutshell, I would like to say we do have Jupiter retrograde, we do have Uranus retrograde, Neptune is retrograde, Saturn is retrograde, Pluto has come direct now, but we still have a lot of retrograde energy. Retrograde energy means things are a bit slow. Retrograde energy means we are reviewing actions we've taken in the past. Retrograde energy means we are going back to the drawing board regarding some things that we started perhaps earlier on if you recall beginning of this year was very fast things happen very fast and then past few months it's been a little slow and right now also it's a little slow we will also have saturn go direct um, next month so slowly slowly planets will go direct and things will start moving forward but this year, towards the end of the year in December, we have Mars retrograde. Mars is a personal planet. And when personal planets retrograde, we usually feel the slowdown. So December, we will feel Mars retrograde. And early next year, we will have Venus and Mercury retrograde as well. So we are going into big um, retrograde energy. So just keep that in mind and um, work with it, right? Work with it. Do the back end work, right? Do the work in the background and what i mean by that is um say if you want to i don't know launch a business right there's a lot that goes into launching a business do your homework do your research do the background work figure it out think about it don't just uh, launch impulsively right now right that's what i mean by background work the research the dedicated um, back end that goes into building something that's what you can do during retrograde so it's a good way to channel retrograde energy so i hope this video was useful i hope this video was helpful and the most important thing to keep in mind is the impulsive aggressive nature of aries and keep a check on it use it to take action use it to get things done use it to move forward but Think of the consequences, think of the results that this action is going to bring you and then take that action, right? Don't be impulsive, don't be aggressive, don't just say things because you feel like it. Aries can do that. Um, I have an Aries moon, I know. My Aries moon is at 22 degrees actually, so it's really, really close to this moon. And yeah, <laughs> so that's that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye.